Hi guys and welcome back to At Home with Elisa. Today I am in day two of my new garden maintenance routine. So I've already done weeding and seeding and today is the day for um, transplanting, potting up or planting. So I do have quite a backlog of things that I need to actually get into the ground. I've got quite a few in pots at the moment. I need to get some into the ground. Today I am going to be planting into my garden some gerberas and star jasmine. So gerberas would have to be one of my favourite flowers to have in the garden. Um, last summer, so they're typically a summer flowering plant for us, last summer I think we had, I was close to 10 all up. I had about 10 all different coloured gerberas that I had been collecting over the course of a couple of months. And um, with our huge weather events that we've had this year, I think only one of them survived. So they are prone to rot. They have what's called a crown. So a crown is where the plant actually forms its life. Even though it does have roots, the crown is the most important part of the plant. And with that crown, you need to have it elevated above the soil level because they are prone to rot. So just with over two meters of rain that we've had this year alone, I think we were at 2.3 or something. I'm not entirely sure but we've had a ridiculous amount of rain which we don't normally have and most of my gerberas didn't survive so they just rotted out from that crown center so this is one of the gerberas that I'm actually looking at planting today it's a beautiful white gerbera and I love these gorgeous flowers you can see here this flower here is a fresh flower whereas see this one here that's actually an older flower so that's a more mature flower so typically I would come and I would actually probably deadhead that one because I wouldn't use it in a bunch but this one here oh no nope, that one there <laughs> there's so many flowers that one there is a lovely fresh one so gerberas are one of my favorite flowers to grow in the garden they're just great they're perennial in our area so they come back every year I have this white one and this pink one which I think is just stunning. I'm a pink girl, definitely. But yes, I'm looking to plant these into the garden today. So I'm just reading the tag and it says that it loves full sun, which we definitely have full sun, and it flowers for most of the year. I find in the colder months, obviously, you don't get as many flowers. Um, a height of 20 to 30 centimeters and a width of 40. It does say that it likes well-drained soil and that it's dry tolerant. So therefore, if it does actually dry out a little bit, it can handle it. Obviously, with the weather event that we had, that's the reason why my gerberas didn't last. So I will be slowly building up my gerbera collection again. I do actually have some seeds for gerberas, so I'm looking to sow those as well. Um, I think next week I'll be doing some flower sowing. So hopefully I can get some more gerberas and it's kind of like a potluck. It's like a lucky dip because you don't know exactly what colours you're going to get and that's kind of cool. So that's the gerbers that I'm looking at planting. They'll go in my two raised beds that I've got here, my two twin beds I call them. So I do kind of similar plantings in both of the beds. However, in my new back bed, which I've only just finished constructing, I'm actually looking at planting out some star jasmine. So star jasmine is another one of my favorite flowers. Um, it's just very prolific in our area. There is different varieties that which we can't actually grow in our area because they, they can be a little bit dangerous. We've got a lot of um, native bush right beside us and I don't want anything getting in there or birds transplanting things that might be a little bit dangerous and kind of go wild in the bush. So that is something that we keep an eye on, but I do have a variety of star jasmine that won't take off into the native environment. So there's no way that I'm going to be able to pronounce the variety of star jasmine that I have. So I'm gonna put it on the screen now. <laughs> So star jasmine, is an, this one is an evergreen, which means that it doesn't lose any of its leaves. It will actually die off a little bit in colour in the winter. It'll just sort of look a little bit more lacklustre, but that's perfectly fine by me because the area that I'm looking to plant out, I need to use it as a large screen to actually screen off some of the next door neighbour's wetlands. They've got some wetlands next to my garden and I just want to screen it off and give it a nice sort of, um, a nice vista from my garden. So I need like, to create a green wall. So the tag says that it is ideal for covering fences, which is exactly what I want to do, and that it likes full sun, it can grow to six meters, it's a climbing plant, and they like to be pruned well. So the time you prune it is in autumn and you feed it in the spring. Now I have missed out on feeding these. Um, they have been a little bit neglected. 
and they do look a bit rough. Exhibit A. So they definitely need a good feed. They need to get into the ground. They've just been sitting in pots for so long and again with our weather like I'm so lucky. I had so many potted plants that didn't make it and the ones that did are just looking a bit rough. So the weather has been insane but fingers crossed, knock on wood, fingers crossed that we are over the worst of that weather. We have definitely had much more drier conditions just in the last month or so. I know that our La Nina, our third round of La Nina is due to end in, I believe March is the latest prediction. So when that ends, we should be in a much more neutral climate, um, which means no extensive amounts of rain. The rain was ridiculous. So my plants that are in pots should actually fare a lot better. So even though this star jasmine obviously has been potted up for quite a while, I think I've had this close to a year. That's how long I've been meaning to plant it in the garden, but I haven't had the garden bed built. So it is just being finished. And even though it's been in pots, it's still flowered. So again, these should be dark green leaves. They obviously are struggling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant them into the new garden bed. And I will also make sure that I give them um, some good compost around them. And then I will actually put some slow release fertilizer on. And just over the next few weeks, I'll actually give them like a weekly sea salt treatment. And that should help them bounce back. I have faith that they'll bounce back. They're pretty hardy. So that's the two types of plants that I've chosen to plant out into the garden today. So let's get planting. So I'm just pointing to the crown of the plant here. And again, that is the life source, it is the most important part of the gerbera. And it needs to be planted above the existing soil level. So it needs to be nice and high, the higher the better actually. When I was spacing these out in the garden, I just wanted to allow for, obviously I have some existing plants in there. Those violas are quite mature already, but I do have a silver bead in the background, which I know will get quite big. So I was just making sure I left enough room. I also decided to plant the pink gerbera here in the same garden bed as the new white one. The reason being is that the other twin garden bed that I've already got, I have some gerbers already planted in that and I didn't have any in this one so just like to keep it uniform. After I finished planting the gerbers, I just gave them a good water in with some seaweed solution. I was just spacing out all of my star jasmine along that very back fence line which is a bit hard to see on camera but I'll be so excited when it actually grows up the fence. It will look so beautiful. In the first pot I actually found that there was an extra plant in there so I'll use that for another project that I have planned. It's always nice to have two for one. The soil that I'm using here is brand new soil, as I said it's a new garden and it is very sandy. So when I was planting in I made sure that I was mixing in a good amount of organic compost. I do know that below the sand there's a big layer of cardboard, below that there is a lot of earthworms so it won't take long for this garden bed to become really healthy. But in the meantime I just need to add some compost to everything that I plant. Okay, so I've finished planting all of those. Let's have a close look. So just as you come in here, this is one of my first garden beds that you see when you walk into the garden. And I planted up that beautiful pink gerbera. Look at the colors with that snapdragon, I love it. So when I was planting it, I made sure that I had that crown nice and high and hopefully drainage won't be an issue in this garden. As I said, they do like to have a little bit on the dry side. Just beautiful. 
and just up the other end of the garden I have the white one and look at that one isn't that just gorgeous that one's got so many flowers on it and I love it with these little violas it's just gorgeous so pretty and then all the star jasmine have been planted along the very very back fence of this garden as I was saying before I have a little bit of a wetlands from the neighbors you can see up to the top of this post here I'm trying to screen out all of this here so that star jasmine should grow up and create like a wall of green so it will be the view will be stopped essentially I'm trying to do it to about that height so that I see the beautiful trees but I don't I won't see all these grasses which kind of go different colors of brown at different times of year and there's some self-seeded trees in here so that's not actually on our property so I just want to screen off so that it'll look really pretty from in here I do plan on extending the height of this back fence so as you can see it currently goes to here I'm looking at taking it all the way to see this point here I'm looking at bringing it extra wire fencing all the way across to join up to there so that should be a lovely big green wall of star jasmine in the future so as you can see they are looking a little bit rough they're still flowering they're such hardy hardy plants so they're looking a little bit rough I did water them in with some sea salt however I will continue to just feed them now that they're actually in a garden bed it will be so much easier to control the water that gets to them and hopefully I have a lovely, lovely fence full of star jasmine in about two years time. It's all about the long game. But look at those cute little flowers. I can't wait till I get masses of flowers and that beautiful scent that they have. I just, I just love them. They're just so cute. So thank you so much for joining me in the garden today. I love having my little hour and a half of a morning just to get out into the garden and see what I can get done. My new garden maintenance I think is going well. I have quite the backlog of excuse Eugene sorry it's morning it's what he's doing what he does I have quite the backlog of plants that I need to plant but I think if I can stick to my routine I should be able to get them all planted. So I've already done weeding and seeding. Uh, today was obviously planting transplanting and potting up day um, I still have a lot of things to do but that's all right I can only do a certain amount I'm really making sure I stick to that hour and a half and not extend it obviously on a weekend I have a lot more extra time so I can do things then but I need that garden maintenance routine down pat so I just have to keep sticking to it again if anybody has any garden maintenance routines that they follow can you please let me know in the comments or email me that would be fantastic because i just want to make sure that i'm covering everything as it is our peak growing season right now and i know i should have a garden that is absolutely full of fruits and flowers and veggies and i don't and that is because of the garden maintenance routine not being put in place a few months ago so better late than never it's always a good time to start, right? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me in the garden today. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing and I hope you enjoy me next time. Thank you.